Here in Greater Des Moines, we're the unexpected sports mecca that feels like home. We are the big balls, the little kickers, the underdogs, and the bulldogs. We've got events wacky and wild, big and small, we host them all. And that old sports cliche, nobody believes in us? Nah, when you come here, you'll believe. Because in Des Moines, only the S's are silent. Let's go! Being your family's grocery store isn't just about having the best butcher cut meat or the freshest produce. It's not about having the highest quality online shopping or experts who handpick your groceries. And it's not just about giving you the most affordable prices. Being your family's grocery store means making sure that you have all of that. And that's why at Fairway Meat and Grocery, it's what we've always been about. When you choose Delta Dental of Iowa, you set a chain of good in motion because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you get more than great dental and vision insurance. You make a difference for others. Choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. In Iowa, we all play by the same rules. Hard work pays off, practice makes perfect, success is something you earn, and teamwork helps us all be winners. The Iowa Pork Producers Association is proud to support statewide high school athletics. Because on our team and on yours, what we bring to the table is what brings us all together. Learn more about our commitment to Iowa at iowapork.org. We'd like to welcome you to this year's Iowa Girls State Softball Tournament in Fort Dodge, Iowa. We hope you've enjoyed the action today, and we're here today with Farm Bureau President Brent Johnson. And we're actually visiting Brent at his farm just outside of Manson, Iowa. We are so thankful for all those who support us to help put on this great event, none of which are more important than Iowa Farm Bureau, our proud title sponsor. Why does Iowa Farm Bureau invest in Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union? The Iowa Farm Bureau is proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union, and we're also thrilled to be a part of this year's Girls State Softball Tournament. This tournament not only showcases Iowa's elite teams, but the athletes competing here today are among the nation's best and brightest, and our farmers are among the nation's most productive. Our partnership with the Girls Union gives us the opportunity to honor both while supporting and uplifting the Iowa Girls. Why has the Iowa Farm Bureau invested so much in support of the Iowa Girl and all of Iowa's youth across this nation? Well, we at Farm Bureau believe in championing Iowa's youth. After all, one day they will be our state's future leaders. The Iowa Farm Bureau Scholarship Program, you know, we've given over a half a million dollars every year to kids across the state. We've also teamed up with the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union to sponsor concussion insurance at no cost to those athletes or their families so that they can continue to compete at a high level. We've also provided teachers over the last eight years with over $450,000 so that they can properly equip their classrooms. And most recently, we've gifted a million dollars to the FFA Foundation for their efforts to increase um, agriculture awareness and support their chapters across the state. The student athletes participating in this year's tournament are taking home some great souvenirs. You know, the signature ball program, a memento that they can take with them so someday they can look back on their experiences here and, and know that the effort that they put in has really paid off and, and really congratulate all those students that are competing here at this year's tournament. Thank you, Brent, and thank you, Iowa Farm Bureau. Now let's get back to playing ball. 
Good evening and welcome to Fort Dodge. We're at the Kruger Field at the Harlan and Hazel Rogers Sports Complex here, home of the Girls State Softball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. Dar Danielson, Zarin Agastol on the Girls Union Network powered by Mid-American Energy Company. We're heading toward the home stretch here on this field anyway, <laughs> Class 1A. Martins Del St. Mary's, the number one seed, taking on the number four seed, Wayne, here in this ball game as these two teams met twice during the regular season, split those games. We'll talk a little bit more about that coming up, but let's first take a look at the road to the championship for these two teams. A uh, record of 22-8 and eight for Wayne, defeated Remsen St. Mary's 8-2 in the quarterfinals. Devin Davis, a grand slam, just the 16th in state tournament history. We had another one here on this diamond today, the 17th for um, uh, Ankeny Centennial. For Martinsdale, St. Mary's, the top seed, 26-6, and six, defeated Fort Dodge St. Edmund, one uh, nothing in a nail-biter in the quarters. Campbell German is uh, the pitcher, one hit allowed with 12K. Sydney Bears, an RBI double in the sixth inning that drove in that winning run. So this should be another good one here in the 1A semifinals as we head toward setting up all the championships. We'll be back to talk a little bit more about the, this ball game coming up after this from the Girls State Softball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. What's affordable to her might not be for him. Our means may be different, but our need for energy is the same. And keeping the price for that energy as low as possible is exactly what we strive to do. It's what we've always done. Investments made 10 years ago have kept prices nearly unchanged. Investments made today will help keep prices predictable for the future with energy that's cleaner, reliable, and affordable for all. An energy future that's American-made. Mid-American. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Living your best life means something different to everyone, especially when it comes to health care. That's why Mercy One offers compassionate, personalized care. We are here for you with one team of experts providing access to the primary care and highly rated specialty care you need easily and conveniently. So go ahead, live your best life. We're with you every step of the way. Mercy One, your best life, our one purpose. Of the Girls Union Digital Network, powered by Mid American Energy, we're getting set for the 1A semifinal to set up the championship match on Friday at 7:30, right back here on Kruger Seeds Field. Dar Danielson, Zarin Agustall, and Zarin. These teams met in the second game of the season, which uh, Wayne won two nothing. Then uh, down the road uh, in uh, June, about a well, not a little more than a month later, it was Wayne defeating. Um, Martinsdale St. Mary's, or no, excuse me, Martinsdale St. Mary's defeating Wayne in the uh, second game, 8-2. to two. So, I don't know if you draw anything from that. It was later in the season, a bigger score there, but uh, obviously kind of evenly matched teams. They've seen each other before, so that always uh, kind of makes it interesting. Yeah, evenly matched teams. I think we're going to see an evenly matched game today. If you had to give the advantage uh, to somebody, Martinsdale St. Mary's was in this semifinal game a year ago, so they have that experience. Let's go to our PA announcer for introduction of the starting lineups here. On Friday at 7.30 p.m. right here at Cougar Seeds Field. Now let's meet your non-starters. First of all, for the visitors from Wayne. Number three, Carson Anderson. Number seven, Emily Black. Number 18, Skyler O'Brien. And number 23, Tavy Cooper. Your assistant coach, Dally Lane. Starting lineup for the Wayne Falcons, leading off playing third base, number 20, Ava Whitney. Playing <laughs> second and first base, number 29, Ella Whitney. Playing third going to pitching, number 8, Abby Joe Fortune. Leading up there for the Falcons, going to pitching, number 19, Izzy Moore. Playing <laughs> fifth in center field, number 13, Clara O'Brien. Playing sixth in right field, number 22, Devin Davis. Playing seventh. Number 10, Bristol Peck. Heading 8 in left field, number 21, Lady Harvey. 
Aaron, are you ready? I'm ready for state tournament <laughs> softball. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really fun game. I was mentioning before we went into break there, two teams that have experience here at the state tournament, but it's been a couple of years since Wayne has played in a semifinal, whereas Martinsdale St. Mary's, they were in this game and lost a year ago. Can they get to the state championship game this year? And I've done a couple games already where the two teams had met before, or they're in the same conference, you know, they met each other. And all of those kind of went deep into the game before one team kind of pushed through, got the lead and broke it open a little bit, and then went on to win. So that's the thing here. Uh, runners are going to be precious, and getting those runners across early on is going to be a big deal. Yeah, everything I've seen so far in this tournament, that team that strikes first, they're putting themselves in a really good position. Even if the other team comes back later in the game, you have those early insurance runs to try to push you through. We saw that with North Scott, the number eight seed, to play for a state title, scored two runs early in the game. Those two runs were the difference. As you talk about the two pitchers here, Campbell German uh, coming in to the tournament at a .88 um, ERA. She had 12 strikeouts, two walks in the quarterfinal. And then Izzy Moore came in, 1.86 ERA. She had two walks, seven Ks in the win. So pitching, again, always important here. And uh, But it's the little things, lack of errors and, and lack of base running mistakes, taking advantage of what, what you're given. Yeah, here in Class 1A, Class 2A, some of these lower classes, it really comes down to your pitching. And we have seen some spectacular pitching so far in this tournament. For Wayne, Ava Whitney will lead it off, the third baseman. One for three with a double in the quarterfinal. Takes yeah. a strike. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Wayne goes back to back. Whitney Whitney to start the order. Campbell German in the circle. Delivers a second pitch right down the tube for a strike. Ahead on the batter, quickly 0-2. I was just going to say a minute ago, it looks like we're going to be sunny and a problem there, but now a few clouds have pushed over, and yeah. it won't be such a problem down the right side. Yeah, and for the first baseman, absolutely. Swing and a miss. Got her on the riser. Yeah. And there's one away. Yeah, great pitch there, a little bit of a rise. A little bit of a change up there. Out of German does a great job to get ahead and get the first batter. But it's been, uh, this is the first day I've felt muggy at all here yeah. at different yeah. times in the afternoon and then tonight a little bit. But otherwise, it's been cool and nice. 
And that brings up the other Whitney, Ella Whitney, the first baseman. She steps in. German delivers a strike. That's all she's thrown to start the ball game. Four straight strikes. Yeah, Check. Trying to get out ahead right away. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. Checks the wristband. Delivers again right by the batter. 0-2. Send it an early message. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing is the people behind are seeing, okay, wow, she's a really good pitcher, so you might have that fear in your mind coming to the plate. Yeah. That one outside the first ball now she's thrown. One and two the count. Checks the wrist again, looks into Sydney Bears, the catcher, and dribbles one in. Yeah, just lost the handle on that one, and she's smiling with her catcher, Bears, behind home plate. Overender at first, Baker at second, German Brindley at short, and Pearson at third. The infield defense for you. This one is high, and now she's run it full. Augie Berger, Emily Hughes, and Marianne Hart, the outfield left to right. Yeah, great at bat here by Ella. Not, not getting down on herself as she got down on the count, worked it back. And pops one up on the infield. First baseman comes in, makes the play. There's two away. I like the everybody really calling it out right there. You know, there was a lot of good communication. Sometimes those can be tough because the pitcher wants to make the play, right? They want to have the out. Yeah. The catcher's running up the line. The first baseman's running down the line. It's like, who is going to get this softball? Great job by the first baseman. Calls it, I got it, I got it. Catch. And that brings up the catcher, Ali Joe Fortune. And first pitch strike again here. Yeah, Fortune been a name for Wayne. Go back to Brianna Fortune, a four-time All-Stater for Wayne. Fortune was 0-2 in that quarterfinal. And fouls that off. Haley Fortune has been a, a three-time, excuse me, four-time All-Stater as well. Brianna Fortune, Haley Fortune. What a name here at Wayne. Here's the 0-2. Swing and popped up. Second baseman scoots back. Ellie Baker makes the easy play. And it's down in order for Wayne in the top of the first. We'll come back with Martinsdale St. Mary's up to bat after this at the Girl State Softball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. What's affordable to her might not be for him. Our means may be different, but our need for energy is the same. And keeping the price for that energy as low as possible is exactly what we strive to do. It's what we've always done. Investments made 10 years ago have kept prices nearly unchanged. Investments made today will help keep prices predictable for the future. With energy that's cleaner, reliable, and affordable for all. An energy future that's American-made. Mid-American. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Hey fans, Central College has you covered with career building programs and with tuition less than $20,000 a year on tons of scholarships, it's the best decision ever. Apply today at central.edu. There's a large fly in here buzzing around causing trouble that I'm about to kill. But anyway, we're, we're set to go after a one, two, three inning for Wayne. Martin's doing some areas will come to the plate. Brindley German, the shortstop, Ellie Barker, the second baseman and Campbell German, the pitcher. The uh, defense, Izzy Moore in the circle. Allie Jill Fortune behind the plate. Ella Whitney at first. Chloe Sims at second. Bristol Peck at short. Ava Whitney at third. The outfield left, right. Lan Laney Harvey, uh, Clara O'Brien, and Devin Davis for Wayne. Here we go. German steps in the shortstop. And bunts it foul. 
on the first pitch. Yeah, trying to get out ahead. Sometimes you can catch the defense sleeping right away. That's what she was trying to do, just trying to get on. Talked about getting ahead early, getting yeah, runners on. Shake it scoring. up early on. You see that yep. a lot. Yep. yep. Sometimes, especially with that leadoff hitter, you know, they're a big slap hitter, get hit, hit the gaps, but if they butt it on and get on. So here's the 0-1. This one comes inside. One and one. 186 ERA for Moore so far this year. She had a good season, 20 and 7, 21 and 7, with the win in the quarterfinals. This one stays fair down the right field line, going to the corner. She'll round second, heading for third, and in easily with the triple, a Kruger Seeds extra base triple. All your extra base hits brought to you by Kruger Seeds. Visit KrugerSeed.com today. Well, that's a way to get started early. Yeah, great swing there. Just shoots it out into right field and couldn't ask for a better positioning right on the line, scooting down and into the, the right angle corner. into the corner help too. Yep. That's a sure triple usually as Baker moves up and pulls the bunt back. Yeah, now, now, if you're, now you're just trying to bring a run in. Anything, and she's a slap hitter, so anything to the right side, that's what she's trying to do. Anything to the right side scores a run here. Lays it down on the left side. They look her back. Now stop, now throw. And everybody's safe and all the way around to second. On the fielder's choice goes Ellie Baker. I think that's how they'll score that. Yeah, yep, that'll go down. Yep, that'll go down as a fielder's choice as she looked to third. And one of those plays where it was a good heads up by Baker. She saw that there was a little bit more space on the left side. She knows she has good speed. So instead of just trying to score the run, let's get two in scoring position now. Three, four, and five do up for Martinsdale St. Mary's. And Moore kind of fell down as she was trying to throw. That one's low for ball one to Campbell German. Talked about getting out ahead early, and that's exactly what Martinsdale St. Mary's is trying to do. For Campbell, the pitcher, she'd like nothing more than to drive in a few runs and go back to the circle with the lead. This one is going to rip foul over against the tarp on the left side there. And if you're Izzy Moore right now, it's just deep breath. Let's find an out, right? Yeah. Even if we sacrifice one run, let's just find an out somewhere right yeah. now. And strike out, best case scenario, but just get an out. Yeah, no need to panic early. This one, that's going to drop down the right field line. And that will score two. Yeah, German and Baker. Baker's got so much speed. She was not stopping. No matter what Coach Wood was saying <laughs> down that third base side, there was no stopping her. And as you mentioned, German, the pitcher, gets herself a couple of run support. Beautifully placed right down yeah. there on that right side. That's where the triple went, and that's where the two RBI single went. Let's watch that one again. Just nobody there. Yeah. It's that's a perfect place to put it. And, and look you at Baker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Look at Baker. Baker's looking to pass. She, she yeah, she was <laughs> close to doing that. She do that. You do that, you're out. You're out. But she, yep. Yeah, she was right on the hills there, yep. saying, "Hey, speed it up." Yeah, Baker's got really good speed. Now it's just a conversation right now with Coach Heather Fortune out there talking to our team. And exactly what I was just telling you a moment ago is, is okay, it's two runs, right? Wayne scored a ton of runs this year. Yeah. They scored 17. They scored 10 a bunch of times in the regional tournament. They can score runs. Right now, we just need to get out. Yeah, shake it off. We're, we're bad. Bases are cleared. We're back to no outs. Let's just go after the next batter here, which is Abby Hughes, the designated player. Yeah. They put up 19 against Southwest Valley back on June 2nd. I mean, this Wayne team, they can score, but right now they got to get Martinsdale St. Mary's out. Hughes was 0 3 in the quarterfinals, swings and misses at the first one. Looking for a first hit here. And hitting is kind of contagious, too. Yeah. You, you see that happen, and then you come up to the plate, and you got the confidence, too. Okay, we can hit this pitcher. This one lifted high. Second baseman Sims going back, and she'll make the play on the infield for out number one. Yeah, and that's one of those plays right there. It's just, hey, let's get an out. Now we got an out. Now kind of what you were just saying with Martinsdale St. Mary's, hitting's contagious now for Wayne. 
Okay, we got one out. Now we know we can get them out. Now let's get let's get another out. Got a four set second base. Sydney Bears, the catcher, steps in. Swing and a miss, a big cut. Bears had the RBI and drove in a winning run on a double. It was one for three in the quarterfinal. Morris throwing ten pitches so far. These first five batters for Martinsdale St. Mary's. This one off the handle foul. Open two, she's ahead of the batter here. It's the power of the cowgirl hat. I've, I don't know how many cowgirl hats we've seen yeah, so far in this tournament, a ton. But everybody on the bench, maybe we'll get a look at it a little bit later on. Everybody on the bench for Martinsdale St. Mary's wearing those cowgirl hats. We've seen Ankeny Centennial wearing them as well. Regina had a bunch of them. That one's high. <laughs> and so far I've been winning Ankeny Centennial. They're going to play for a state title. Yeah. Regina's going to play for a state title. So the power of the cowgirl hat here in 23. Well, early in this one, but the cowboy hat dug out his head at this point. One, two. High, didn't ever. Bears wasn't biting on that one. Yeah, good eye. She's the catcher, so sometimes the catchers can pick up out of the pitcher's hands a little bit better. They see a lot of pitches from behind home plate and just sees that one going out of the zone and lets it go. The 2 2. And chopper foul. Moore looks in, deals high, full count. Yeah, just worked it full. There's been a parade of Blue Devils on the base pass so far today. Harris trying to get a free one here. Payoff pitch. This one lifted into the gap and left center. Center fielder is over quickly. But the runner advances. Yeah, German. Yeah, instead of a free one, Bears said, not so fast. I'm going to earn my way on as she bloops one over the shortstop's head. Just a tough play. Peck, the shortstop, turned around and went after it. O'Brien, the center fielder, she came in to eventually make it on a, on a hop. But that's just a tough play, one of those areas of the field that's not covered very well. Brings up the third baseman, Hadley Pearson, 0 for 2 in the quarter foul. Takes a strike. Runners at first and second. This one ripped foul over the right field fence. 0 oh and 2. Approaching 20 pitches now for more here in the first. We talk about, you know, as, as far as your arm, you know, you're not worried as much in softball about pitch count, but fatigue sometimes can sit in after a long inning. 20, this will be pitch number 20. Oh, got her on the edge. Strikeout looking for Hadley Pearson. Yeah, big strikeout. Over 200 strikeouts this season for Moore. At 206 coming in here to the state tournament. First one she finds today. 200 strikeout lady there in the circle. Here's Ani Berger, the left fielder. Berger hits one toward right, and the right fielder goes back. Devin Davis and gloves it, so there's... Uh, Two runs on three hits, no errors, and two left on. At the end of one, Martinsdale won, and Wayne coming to bat in the top of the second. At the Girls State. In Iowa, we all play by the same rules. Hard work pays off, practice makes perfect, success is something you earn, and teamwork helps us all be winners. The Iowa Pork Producers Association is proud to support statewide high school athletics. Because on our team and on yours, what we bring to the table is what brings us all together. Learn more about our commitment to Iowa at iowapork.org. 
living your best life means something different to everyone, especially when it comes to health care. That's why Mercy One offers compassionate, personalized care. We are here for you with one team of experts providing access to the primary care and highly rated specialty care you need easily and conveniently. So go ahead, live your best life. We're with you every step of the way. Mercy One, your best life, our one purpose. You're watching the Girls' Union Digital Network, powered by Mid-American Energy. Thanks for joining us in this 1A semifinal. Martinsdale St. Mary's plates two in the bottom of the first, and that brings up Wayne, the pitcher, Izzy Moore, to lead off the second. They're yet to get a base runner, went down at order in the top of the first, and now facing Campbell German. And this one ripped hard, but foul. Yeah, what you know, after you have a little bit of a long inning there as a pitcher, what what better way than come back up and and try to you know knock down a hit for your team and get your team on the base get pass the for rally the first started. Time. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Some more a big opportunity here. She stepped out for a second, but she'll be ready to go. German checking the wristband, delivers one that kind of hung up high on her. One and one. Just a sophomore, too, is more. This one whipped high and far, but wide as well. Over the big tree on the left field side. Yeah, yeah. And it's a long strike. Yeah, this is a really young team. O'Brien and Davis are junior, a junior and a senior, but otherwise... This one is pushed out and right to the left fielder. Ani Berger had to make one step in and makes the out. Yeah, otherwise it's, it's a really young team. Whitney's an eighth grader. You got three sophomores in the middle of the order, and then for, uh, Allie Fortune's a sophomore as well. Peck, shortstop, that's an eighth grader. I mean, this Wayne team is very young. Claire O'Brien, the center fielder, steps up. She's a junior with one out. High pitch there. Clouded up a little bit. Yeah. Definitely cooled the off. Sun moves to the west. And Fluther on the change. Yeah, great change up. Great pitch there. As you mentioned, kind of the only thing that's lingering around here is that you can still feel that humidity in yeah, the air. Yeah, it can a little bit. Other than that, it it, uh, it's a beautiful day. It has been a beautiful three days of softball. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Low. Yeah, I was kidding Gene Berger. I said, well, thanks for getting putting in air this year because it feels good <laughs> after that first day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 2-1. High on the infield over the third baseman. She'll make the play. Hallie Pearson, Hadley Pearson with the catch, and there's two away. I was, I was joking with uh, Taylor Anderson, the assistant director of sports marketing and branding and sponsorship, and he said he was in charge of the weather, so he's doing a good job so far. Devin Davis, who had the big blast to break it open in the quarterfinal, the grand slam takes a ball. Her first home run of the season comes in the quarterfinal of the state tournament, and it's a rare grand slam. Well, there you go. Take that one home with you. Yeah, I understand that they retrieve all the home run balls and bring them back to the to the parents. Yep, so yep, just that's like nice. Yeah, just like the uh, women's World Series there in Omaha, cool tradition. Mm -hmm. Here's a one one. Yeah, you're just talking about Gene Herner staff. They always do a phenomenal job of putting on. We don't just say that, but uh, they they do. I mean, these tournaments are always fantastic. And a swing and a miss, and that's a strikeout, and that's a 1-2-3 inning once again here for Wayne. We'll go to the bottom of the second. Barnesdale St. Mary's coming up with a 2-0 lead here at the Girls State Softball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. What's affordable to her might not be for him. 
Our means may be different, but our need for energy is the same. And keeping the price for that energy as low as possible is exactly what we strive to do. It's what we've always done. Investments made 10 years ago have kept prices nearly unchanged. Investments made today will help keep prices predictable for the future. With energy that's cleaner, reliable, and affordable for all. An energy future that's American-made. Mid-American. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Union Digital Network. You see the diamond there, powered by Mid-American Energy, and it'll be Marianne Hart, and it'll be 8-9, and then the top for Martinsdale St. Mary's with a one or a 2 nothing lead here in the bottom of the second. That one fouled off the dugout. The Wayne dugout. Yeah, yeah. Now Martinsdale St. Mary's won a state championship back in 2012. In the semifinals a year ago, falling. That one's outside. Seems like there have been a big back and forth in 1A with, you know, with the titles. Yeah. Here in recent years. Yeah. Seven of these Martinsdale St. Mary's girls were on last year's semifinal team. Swing and a miss at the high one, one and two. For the right fielder, Marianne Hart. A sacrifice in the opener. 0 for 2, but had a sacrifice. Sophomore takes it high. 2 2. Izzy Moore in the circle trying to retire the leadoff batter. This one foul. Allie Jill Fortune is the catcher. Ella Whitney at first, Chloe Sims at second. Bristol Pack at short, Ava Whitney at third on the infield. Set in the outfield, Laney Harvey, Claire O'Brien, and Devin Davis left to right for Wayne. As Moore looks in, winds, and just outside, the umpire says, and it's a full count. There's a strike, got her looking. Yeah, what, what a good pitch and not what she was looking for, so to say. And I think she was maybe thinking it was gonna be away and off the plate yeah. and try to make her, you know, but she came right in there at the knees. Brings up Emily Hughes, the center fielder. The sophomore. She takes a ball. For these last two years, Martinsdale St. Mary's last in the tournament, 2018. They finished tied for last. Another ball, low 2 and 0. Oh. Since that state title in 2012, they've been slowly building back. Finished tied for seventh, and semifinals a year ago. Back in the semifinals, trying to get to the title game. Swing and a miss. Two and one. Moore would really like to get the number nine batter here as the top of the order waiting. And the former Brindley German who led off with a triple. Here's a pitch fouled off. 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. 16 also. Looks like semifinals. Lost in that one as well. Been kind of a tough game. As is 14, been a tough game for Martinsdale St. Mary's. 2-2, Two -two. chopper, that's gonna get foul. Catch 
Catcher setting up outside. <laughs> Comes across the middle, though, yeah. and strikes her out. So two strikeouts here for the first two batters. Yeah. Good to see out of Moore. A little bit of a tough first inning, but we mentioned only gave up two runs. She can really lock it down now, and Wayne can find a way to step up on offense. It's a game that's anybody's ball game. Brindley German was to uh, triple down the right field line and scored. One of those two runs scored in the first inning. There's a strike. Yeah, lead off hitter. Yeah, those first these first two are so quick. That's how Martinsdale St. Mary's pounces right away. Sends that outside, and German not biting. That's what set him up all season long, is just get out early and just stay ahead. Conversation will be had now yeah. between Fortune and... Yeah, there was a little, I don't know if there's a question about placement of that, like that one she set up outside. It came inside, she yeah. got the strikeout, but yeah. I think it switched more up a little bit, so they're kind of just talking about that, and yeah. then also talking about a dangerous leadoff hitter, what they want. Yeah. And that one comes inside on her, and she tried to turn and fouls it off. So. And, and these two have a really good rapport. They've been doing this for a long time, both sophomores, their classmates. You know, they pitching and catching, I'm sure, been working on this a long time between these two. So you have that good relationship. Be able to go and have that conversation and just say, hey, this is what we want, this is what we need. Set up outside again, throws it outside and strike out the side for a one, two, three inning for Izzy Moore. And we'll go to the top of the third, two nothing, and Wayne coming to bat with seven, eight, and nine on the Girls State Softball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. Here in Greater Des Moines, we're the unexpected sports mecca that feels like home. We are the big ballers, the little kickers, the underdogs, and the bulldogs. We've got events wacky and wild, big and small, we host them all. That old sports cliche, nobody believes in us? Nah, when you come here, you'll believe. Because in Des Moines, only the S's are silent. Let's go! When you choose Delta Dental of Iowa, you set a chain of good in motion because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you get more than great dental and vision insurance. You make a difference for others. Choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. You're watching the Girls Union Digital Network. Top of the third. It'll be 2 3 4 for. There, whoop, let me flip my sheet around. How about we do that? <laughs> It'll be 7 8 9. Yeah. Bristol Peck, the shortstop, takes a ball. That's my first game. I got to get used to this <laughs> flipping this you know, sheet over. There's a ball. First time, huh? Well, well it's been a, <laughs> been a long day, but 2-0. Yeah, no, it's been a lot of fun, though, as this field will wrap up our coverage. This one fouled off. Yeah, and we're way ahead of the other oh, field way, over there after yeah. that 10-inning game. Yeah, Fort Dodge and winter set went long, and then, yeah, because I've been over there all day, and so, uh, but then we had a, a five-inning game that got us about 45 minutes or so back, so, but yeah, they're starting their 5:30 game about when we started this. Uh, she reaches out and catches a piece of that one, but it's foul, and it's 2-2 for Bristol Peck. And that's uh, Van Meter in Central Springs. Be able to give you a second here. We can pull up what's happening over there. That one bounces on the way in to send the count full. Peck, the eighth grader, one for three in the quarterfinal. Van Meter leading Central Springs seven to three. Over on the other diamond. Swing and miss. Both these pitchers starting to heat up a little bit. Yeah. As 
That's the third strikeout now for Campbell German. You talked earlier about some records as far as 16 Grand Slams. Central Springs came just the third team to be here for nine straight years yeah. this year. Pretty incredible what they're doing in North Central Iowa. This one popped up. And as you hear the bong, that means it hit the stands back there. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of times they'll roll down, so I'm, I'm watching our heads here. <laughs> <laughs> Lady <laughs> Harvey, the left fielder, is up. Got a couple down on Radio Row this week. Fouls that off the end of the bat. And sometimes it just takes some time to time up uh, in a, an opposing pitcher and one of this caliber. Now, even though you've seen her, uh, seen him a couple times already, it's been a while. Yeah. And getting used to that. This one inside, and she fouls it off, so hanging tough. Yeah. And, and German, uh, you know, a 0 0.88 ERA coming into this tournament. I mean, she has been pretty good. Doesn't give up a lot of free bases. And that one got away from her. Coming into this tournament, she had walked 16 and hit one. So we're talking 100 innings of softball, and she'd only given out 17 free bases on the season. So she makes you earn it. Yeah, she had two walks and 12 strikeouts in the uh, quarter. This one back, fouled back. So Laney Harvey really hanging in there on this at bat. Got down early, but is battling back now. Fouled off a couple. This will be the sixth pitch of the at bat. And fouls it off again. A lot of the, the young kids really chasing the balls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And don't get souvenirs unless what we talked about earlier, unless uh, yeah, yeah. you hit a home run. But uh, those, have, they have to be returned. Like we had, we had what, 13 foul balls on the game on Monday. It was in the same at bat. It was wild. The one, two. This one is low. Two, two. Now this is a seven pitch at bat here now. Who's going to break first? Yeah. That one popped up and hits the screen. As soon as it hits that, it's dead. Yep, yep. And, and, and really here, German, she has a lot to work with. She still has a ball to give. She still yeah. has a pitch to waste. So she really, right now, she's been working inside, working inside. Must be something trying to work inside here on Harvey. But if she needs to, she can go high. She can go outside, try to get Harvey to chase. But really, she's been working hard inside on Harvey, trying to jam those hands, causing the foul balls. This one inside again, jams her. Oh, almost a diving, but she gets the assist on that. Wow, off the glove, push to the first baseman. And got the out, didn't get the fly out, but got the, the put out nonetheless. Let's see the replay here. As, yeah, it's pretty incredible boom. here. Good wow. athletic athleticism. It? And then it comes out of her glove and just pushes over to the first baseman and Laney Harvey after <laughs> balances, what do I got to do? Swing and a miss from Hallie Ingram. Yeah, it, it'll officially go down as a 1-3 ground out. Uh, yeah. That's how it will be officially scored a 1-3 ground out, but good effort. And that's what we do. I just mentioned that she's been jamming inside, jamming inside, gets one off the handles and got the pitch she wanted. There's a strike, 0-2 oh ahead of this batter. This is Ingram, nine hole hitter. They're trying to get back to the top of the order. Sometimes when you see a pitcher for a second time can help out. Sophomore, and she swings at one outside. And Wayne goes down in order again here in the third. And Martinsdale St. Mary's will come up to bat, leading two nothing here in the bottom of the third at the Girls State Softball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. What's affordable to her might not be for him. Our means may be different, but our need for energy is the same. And keeping the price for that energy as low as possible is exactly what we strive to do. It's what we've always done. Investments made 10 years ago have kept prices nearly unchanged. Investments made today will help keep prices predictable for the future. With energy that's cleaner, reliable, and affordable for all. An energy future that's American-made. Mid-American. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service.
Hey, fans, all of you watching in Wayne and Warren County who couldn't make it over here to the complex, the state tournament merchandise is now available online. Get out your smartphone and scan the QR code you see on the screen there, or just go online, visit IGHSAU.org to browse and customize your merchandise to match your style. So it'll be Ellie Barker, the second baseman, reached on a fielder's choice and scored run number two here, back in the first inning. And that was when she bunted, right? And the pitcher came over and then looked at third and then by yeah. the kind of fell back by the time she went back to first, everybody was safe. And this one, she bunts up right in the air to the third baseman. And it's out number one as Ava Whitney charging in, makes the catch. And that'll bring up Campbell German, who had the two RBI single to right in the first inning. Lifts this one off the handle foul. Can you, you mentioned Wayne County. Can you can you name any of the towns in that that represent Wayne? As a uh, school? You're taxing I, me late I, in the I, day. I'm throwing you uh, out there. Yeah. Throwing you out there. All our friends are. back in Wayne County watching. I'll have to think about it. Okay. There's Wayneville, Wayne City. No. <laughs> Here's the 0 1. Deep fly ball to left. And off the glove of the left fielder. It's down. Turning around. Going to third. Here comes a throw. It's going to be late. Yeah, what a hit there by German. Again, just hits it off that left field wall. Tough play for Harvey, the left fielder. And uh, German was just going straight to third. Going to credit her for a triple. There are no errors committed. So that'll be an extra base hit brought to you by our friends at Kruger Seeds. At KrugerSeed.com. And Harvey came over and was trying to get, and I think there was almost a collision with the center fielder out there. Yeah, yeah, O'Brien was crashing in. And it got down to the fence. They got it in fairly quickly, but the German was booking around the bases. Yeah, that's the problem with this Martinsdale St. Mary's team. It's been to their benefit, but other teams' problem this year, their speed. I mean, right through the lineup, there's just so much speed, and where a lot of people are just having a double there, you know, that's a ball to left field. It's going to be yeah. a triple. Most times, it'd have to be to right field right in field order to get for the it, triple. Yeah. Yeah. And Second triple of the game for for Martinsdale St. Mary's. Abby Hughes, the designated player, flying out the second. Last time up, she hits this one squarely into the gap. And that'll point German with an RBI single. Yeah, that's just a beautiful swing on a pitch that's in the middle of the zone, kind of hung up there. And Hughes just waited back on it. And just a linear swing, just nice and even swing. That's what you want as a as a coach, that's what you teach, just a nice even line drive swing into left field as we watch this one again. Look at that swing, just a yeah. nice even swing right into the gap, one hops the swick sign out there in left field. And Carson Oberender will come in to run for an IMT insurance substitution, learn how you be worry free at imtims.com. And Sydney Bears, the catcher, will come to the plate. This one fouled off. 14 runs scored for the freshman over Bender this year. 14 runs scored. She has three stolen bases. Again, a freshman at first base. And Moore recorded four straight outs and then that triple and then the single. Now trying to get back on track. Throws it high. They throw down and Overbender is back. Yeah, great back pick there by Fortune behind home plate. Sometimes you just catch them napping, especially you get a courtesy runner in there that hasn't been a part of the game yet. Sometimes they're just a little slow getting back and Fortune does a great job behind home plate. This one fouled off. Pitch was breaking in on her and she fouled it off. One and two. Yeah, and now for uh, Moore, really has everything in her arsenal. One, two, that's what getting ahead. That's why you try to get ahead as a pitcher. 
She can go literally anywhere with this pitch. Doesn't have to be in the zone. Doesn't have to be close to the zone. Looks in, catcher sets up inside, comes in high for ball two. As Bears was not fishing at that high pitch. Yeah. Well, I mentioned before, Bears has a good eye. Gets plenty of pitch recognition from behind home plate in her day. Yeah, she singled the left her last time up. That one's outside, so full count now. Yeah. And that's what that's what more, you know, she I think the one before that maybe. Not quite where she wanted it. That one was where she wanted it on the outside corner, trying to get Bears to go after one and just can't get her to chase. Now you have to go back to the zone here on 3-2. Here's the payoff. And foul. Not a bad pitch. And Bears jumps right on it and fouls it down the right side. Yeah, Bears just a bit off of that one. She saw a pitch she liked there. Tried to turn on it and drive it. Just missed it by a... Uh, Missed it by a bit. 3 2 again. Swing and caught. Third strike. Off the foul back. Yeah. And there's two away. Yeah, great job there by Fortune. Squeezing that. Squeeze the glove when it comes in. That's a free out. She doesn't squeeze that there. It's a foul ball. Yeah. You give new life to the batter. So brings great. up Hadley Pearson, who struck out looking her first time up. And just misses on the edge. 1-0. Pearson's also done some pitching this year for Martinsdale St. Mary's, kind of the second option as a senior. And it's about 60 innings pitched so far this year. This one lifted high. Back off the fence. Rounding third. Coming in, she'll easily score is Hughes. And a double, RBI double for Hadley Pearson. For another Kruger Seeds extra base hit. Learn more about your local Kruger Seeds dealer by going to KrugerSeed.com today. Yeah, Martinsdale St. Mary's, another extra base hit there. Third extra base hit, if we watch this one yeah. again, just right over the head of the fielder. No, you, you, really no play there. You want to play it off the wall, so you don't want to go up to the wall. Played well by the center fielder. Comebacker, the pitcher throws it out and ends the inning there, but not before. Two runs on three hits. And at the end of three complete, 4 nothing, Martinsdale St. Mary's will be back at the top of the fourth after this of the Girl State Softball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. Hello, I'm Brent Johnson, an Iowa farmer from Calhoun County and president of the Iowa Farm Bureau. As proud title sponsor of the state softball tournament, the Iowa Farm Bureau is dedicated to creating a vibrant future for Iowa through partnerships and programs that help cultivate individuals with great character, a strong work ethic, and exceptional leadership skills. Making it to the state tournament is a great accomplishment that takes a lot of support. That's why we provide millions of dollars in awards, grants, and scholarships that recognize athletic and academic excellence. The well-being of Iowa students is also very important to Farm Bureau. That's why we provide concussion insurance coverage at no cost for all students in grades 9 through 12 who participate in a sanctioned sport. As just one of only seven states to provide this coverage, it's just another way we're striving to support Iowa's outstanding young leaders. So, from the Iowa Farm Bureau, congratulations to all the players and coaches on an outstanding season, and good luck in the tournament. Down the Girls' Union Digital Network, powered by Mid-American Energy. You see the score there as uh, Wayne comes up to bat. They've yet to get a base runner here. They've got the top of the order. Zaren, this is uh, where the, you know, the big sticks up front. Got to start getting something going. Yeah, absolutely. For Wayne, this is where they need to come right now, as you don't want to get too far behind. There's a blooper to the shortstop. And Brindley German makes the play and retires Ava Whitney, who struck out and now is flight out. You know, that's all been done so far by German, the pitcher. She is in on the hands of these hitters. Pitch looks good, and then you hit it off the handle. It just doesn't go anywhere. She's done that all game long. Oh, that one had her. 
bending back with that one. Yeah, a little change up there. She changes speed. That's the thing is she'll come inside hard of the fastball. She'll come back with a change up and just really mixes up the hitters. That one's high. She fainted like maybe she was going to try to lay that down on the bunt. Yeah, but it's just been that, that inside. She's really good at the inside pitch. A lot of pitchers stay away from those because you, you end up hitting a lot yeah. of batters, but German's done it really well. There she comes again. In on the hands, and that's so hard to bring that bat around when it's in there on the hands. And, and then, it, and then it cracks you off the handle. And, yeah. and for any of us that have played baseball and softball, when you get a hard ball off those handles, it just it rattles kinda, you. Yeah, rattles you. <laughs> rattles your. It just tingles your fingers. It's something you don't want to feel. That one, it's low. Especially remember that when coaching little league in the early in the spring when you get those cold days those aluminum bats and king you yeah. know and it just like yeah. the kids are like ah it's like electric <laughs> shock on the hands here's the two 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 and the changeup gets her on the strikeout yeah we got uh, college softball being played up in the northlands in the springtime and i know that that time it's uh, it doesn't feel very good Man, I tell you, some of the coldest days of my life were doing Iowa State baseball in the spring up there at Cap Tim Field. You'd sitting out there and you never knew <laughs> what the weather was going to be like. Here's Ali Joe Fortune, the pitcher, or excuse me, the catcher. He fly out the second the first time up. Wow. Sends it to the shortstop. And another inning, same story. Down in order goes Wayne, one, two, three. And we'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Martinsdale St. Mary up four to nothing here at the Girls State Softball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. What's affordable to her might not be for him. Our means may be different, but our need for energy is the same. And keeping the price for that energy as low as possible is exactly what we strive to do. It's what we've always done. Investments made 10 years ago have kept prices nearly unchanged. Investments made today will help keep prices predictable for the future with energy that's cleaner, reliable, and affordable for all. An energy future that's American-made. Mid-American. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Being your family's grocery store isn't just about having the best butcher cut meat or the freshest produce. It's not about having the highest quality online shopping or experts who handpick your groceries. And it's not just about giving you the most affordable prices. Being your family's grocery store means making sure that you have all of that. And that's why at Fairway Meat and Grocery, it's what we've always been about. At the Girls State Softball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau, four nothing. Wayne played it two to lead it off, then uh, two in the third, and now they come to the bottom of the fourth with the eight, nine batters at the top of the order here. So far, Wayne has gone down an order in every inning, has not had a base runner, so. You almost think Wayne at this point has got to follow suit and get, yeah. they had a, a one, two, three inning in the second, but. You gotta think it's imperative now that they don't give up many more runs because they have not scratched out any at all. Yeah. Not even a base runner yet. Yeah, that's the 53rd pitch of the game for Izzy Moore. 52 pitches through two complete innings. So a little over 25 pitches an inning right now. That one low and inside. As far as her strike to ball ratio goes, 54 pitches now, 36 balls she's thrown. Uh, 36 strikes, pardon me, so about 67% strike rate. This one, chopper to second, over easily by Chloe Sims to Ella Whitney, and there's one away. Yeah, Sims plays that really well, and, and, and you know she is counted on for her defense, not in the batting order tonight, just the flex player at second base, so defense, is, that's, that's, your, that's your time. You gotta, you gotta do your job, and Sims has played second base very well today for uh, Wayne. Emily Hughes lays down the bunt right down the line and the throw is wide. As the ball stayed fair. Yeah, that was that was really good job by Hughes. To, she almost touched it outside the box, but she did a good job of like moving her arm and avoiding it. And I think that's the conversation 
Oh, they're going to have a conversation. Let's watch this one again. Did a really good job. It almost hit her right there and it bounced up. And she just laid that one down perfectly. Did they move, make that a hit? Yep, that'll be a hit. hit. So seven hits now for Martinsdale St. Mary's. Four runs, seven hits, no errors. No runs, no hits, no errors for Wayne. Yeah, that's got to be a hit there. That one was a really tough play. I mean, it, it was just bunted perfectly. It's one of those where you can do everything right as an offense, or as a defense, excuse me, and sometimes you just you just get out bunted. You know what I mean? You just get a you just get a really good bunt, and that's what we saw there. So conversation being had here by Wayne in the circle. Coach Heather Fortune out there. 16 years as a head softball coach. She's been here at Wayne for 15 years. Has over 350 career victories. Mentioned all the fortunes that have been through this Wayne program. Brings up the top of the order. Brindley German, the shortstop. Tripled and scored, struck out. She bunts down the line. That one will go foul. Yeah, just too much of that one. You know, and that's how you build a program is you stay around a while and you, you keep working with the kids, you yeah. know. And there's something to be said for that. Yeah. Is staying in a place, one place for a while and building a program and – that one's fouled off. Yeah, and, and, and you know it's it's kind of a family effort too, and I I won't name them because I'm not sure if they want it to be named, but it, uh, somebody watching that knows mutual knows me as well says that Moore and Fortune are actually cousins. I mentioned earlier that you could tell there's a really good camaraderie between those two, and so Moore in the circle and Fortune behind the plate they're actually cousins, and that's why you have such a good relationship there, along with being class their cousins, their classmates, and. Uh, have probably played a lot of softball together. So more right now, they're trying to shut this off, not letting more runs in. They got a runner first, and that pitch is high to run the count to two and two. Emily Hughes over there at first after the single, bunt single. Moore looks in, delivers a 2-2. This one is fouled off. Good pitch. She jumped yeah. right on it, but fouled it off. Yeah, top of the order here for Martinsdale St. Mary's. We've mentioned how, how really good this top of the order has been. So this is a crucial point, I think, in the game for War, uh, for Wayne. If you can get, get three outs here and not allow this top of the order to do any more damage, you'll be feeling good. This one, chopper to second, bobbles it, goes to first and gets the out on the fielder's choice. Yeah, good job there by uh, by Sims on the put out and over at first base. I don't know if she was thinking of maybe turning and going to second and bobbled it or if it just came up hard on her, you know, and she couldn't quite get the handle right away, but she, she gets one out out yeah, of it. Yeah, that's the thing. She composed herself as, again, just the the, 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 you know, the quick slide of hand there by Baker. She is the whole way. and She just knows how to do it, how to drop the bunt, how to get rid of the bat and start running. It's almost more like track to her. The, she, she reached on a fielder's choice and then flied out, so she's 0 for 2, but she scored a run. Yeah. On the first two runs in the first inning. Gonna do it again. Yep. And pull back, pull it back in time, one and one. But going back on Sims, it, it, she got an out, right? Yeah. Uh, that's all she needed to do is she got an out. She could have, you know, got maybe flustered and not got any out, but she didn't. She focused, you know, she focused, gathered herself, and got an out. That's the biggest thing. And that flies, pops back for strike two. Yeah, when you're that close. To the first, you got a little more time, yeah. You know, yeah, 30 with it, feet. and she realized, okay, got it, fired it over there, yeah, yeah. She, she just turned around to the umpire, said, What are you, how many outs? Uh, two. <laughs> he said two, so then she told her, Right, two outs, yeah, two outs, yeah, yeah, about a 30 footer there. She's about halfway between first and second, so 
in that spot. One and two now, two outs, runner at second. Swing and a miss, and that'll end the inning with no damage done, no runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. At the end of four, complete four nothing, and Wayne coming up needing some runs here at the Grove State Softball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. In Iowa, we all play by the same rules. Hard work pays off, practice makes perfect, success is something you earn, and teamwork helps us all be winners. The Iowa Pork Producers Association is proud to support statewide high school athletics. Because on our team and on yours, what we bring to the table is what brings us all together. Learn more about our commitment to Iowa at iowapork.org. Hey fans, Central College has you covered with career building programs and their tuition is less than $20,000 a year and they have tons of scholarships. It's the best decision ever. Apply today at central.edu. Now you'll have to start thinking about college someday. You're a new dad, just like our uh, director, Justin here. Both of you new dads. I was disappointed in both of you not naming your kids after me, but I can understand that. Uh, you know, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, my I'm not sure my daughter I don't know. <laughs> Strike. You yeah. didn't know how to answer that, huh? Yeah. You look pretty well rested, though. For uh, you know what, she is. She's been good. She's good. been good, and I'm gracious that mom's back at home with with baby to to allow me to come up here and do what I love and call call softball. Izzy Moore pops it up to the shortstop. Round number one. That'll bring up Claire O'Brien, the center fielder. Who flying out to third. So how old? Uh, oh, oh, we're getting closer to nine months. So okay. a long ways from college. Yeah, and <laughs> not quite ready to get her out in the yard and start uh, having her pitch yet. No, no, but that's <laughs> that's we start walking. We start pitching. <laughs> I've been I've already been I've already been training myself. I've been all over the YouTubes and pitching trying to do some pitching stuff and trying to learn how to <laughs> learn learn how to pitch a softball fundamentally so I can get it into her. Here's Devin Davis, the right fielder. She struck out her last time up, squares to butt, goes right back to the pitcher, and there's another one, two, three inning for Wayne. Here in the top of the fifth. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth coming up after this as the Girls State Softball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. What's affordable to her might not be for him. Our means may be different, but our need for energy is the same. And keeping the price for that energy as low as possible is exactly what we strive to do. It's what we've always done. Investments made 10 years ago have kept prices nearly unchanged. Investments made today will help keep prices predictable for the future with energy that's cleaner, reliable, and affordable for all. An energy future that's American-made. Mid-American. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Living your best life means something different to everyone, especially when it comes to health care. That's why Mercy One offers compassionate, personalized care. We are here for you with one team of experts providing access to the primary care and highly rated specialty care you need easily and conveniently. So go ahead, live your best life. We're with you every step of the way. Mercy One, your best life, our one purpose. Here on the digital network, IGSSA, IGHSAU digital network, powered by Mid-American Energy. They're singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game as we go to the bottom of the fifth. And the Martinsville St. Mary's fans are very happy with yeah. the singing and the way everything is going right now. As they'll come up to bat with uh, Campbell German, who's been stymied this Wayne offense here tonight. She is uh, single with an RBI, two RBI, and a triple and scored. This one is right in there, and she's three for three with a single to right. Yeah, good piece of hitting there. 
I was going to say, she hit the first pitch. I was going to say, you know, our our viewers, they were on commercial break, didn't get Take Me Out to the ball game, so I thought maybe you would sing it for them now. I would, but... <laughs> we got to watch the replay, we got to watch the replay, yeah. <laughs> Look at that line drive, right up the middle. Played well by O'Brien in center field. Gets it on one hop, turns around, fires it back in. Does a great job there. So here we go. Martinsdale St. Mary's runners on again. Nobody out. Wayne, got to have a stop. This one to the second baseman. Goes down and gets it. Sims and throws the runner out. Actually, Better I, think, out. I think they've done it. They've they've made a change there. That's actually, what was that? Well, that's Whitney, who was at first base. And Sims is now at first base. So I believe Whitney and Sims switch. For, okay, you're right. Yeah have changed positions. Here's a little trick when you do get, your daughter does get older when we go on trips and I'd sing, whenever I saw an Oklahoma license plate, I'd start singing Oklahoma and my kids would roll their eyes. And just, <laughs> ah. There you go, yeah, there's a song about a lot of states we could sing. Yeah. Oh, one. Oh, backhanded by the shortstop comes up, but oh. not quite in time. She had to go deep in the hole on that one. Great job by Peck to get the glove on it, and that holds the runner there, but yeah. Yeah, as, as a runner, anything to your right, you're not going on. Let's watch that again. What? Look at this play in the hole by Peck. Look at that. An eighth grader throw across the diamond, just not quite in time. Yeah, just too deep to turn and make the throw. Flash the leather, young lady. That one's low to Hadley Pearson. She struck out and doubled and had an RBI. These bases were at like 62 or 63. She's got the great play in the hole there. 60, just enough time to get out. This one right back to the pitcher. She'll go to third and high. And here comes the other run. And just exactly the thing that he didn't need. Yeah, a little bit of a, Moore was trying to hustle that throw over to third base to make sure she gets German because she knows the speed of this Martinsdale St. Mary's team. And that ball is going to end up in the tarp in left field. Yeah. Pier Pearson moves up to second base. Now it's 6-0. And now if you're Wayne, you got to get some outs. Four more runs for Martinsdale St. Mary's and they can end this game. Here's Ongi, Ani Berger. Uh, watch this next pitch. Pearson over at second base. She's signaling, and, and I think Fortune noticed that now too, so they're going to have a conversation. Pearson, and it's all legal. It's just she's just positioning, you know, she's calling out where the position is. And, and yeah, now I think, yeah, now I think they're going to have a conversation with uh, with with Heather Fortune as well. No, she's not going to not going to use the timeout to come out, but yeah, Pearson at second base is signaling back to Berger at home where the catcher is setting up at. So there you got to set up kind of late then, right? Yeah. Is there you got to find something. You got to change something up. There's a ball. And again, it's not like a it's you know, not like we've had those signs stealing scandals. It's not nothing, nothing illegal. It's it's perfectly legal legal. She's not stealing a sign, just kind of saying, hey, the catcher's over here, the catcher's over here. And low. More a little flustered right now. And now time is going to be called up. We've got a shoe tie. Yeah. Over there at second base. Pearson. 10 to 3 Van Meter all over Central Springs on the other diamond in the fifth. There's a strike. This is the first uh, 1A semifinal. Northland and Clarksville will follow this game and meet the winner of this one in the title matchup at 7.30 on Friday at Iowa PBS. That one's a swing and a miss. Yeah, I think your best friend Paul will be on the and call for that one. Discussion here of whether that was the third strike or the second. The scoreboard went to three. I only had it as a 3 1 count. Now they're going to check the count here. 
Um, I had it. I had it as three one. That's what I had too. The scoreboard put up three strikes. It is three one. So it'd be a full count now. Yep. Full count to Berger. And comes inside and walks her. And now runners at first and second. Again, we're in a little bit of a danger zone here for Wayne. As you have 8-9 and you flip over to the top of the order. And again, the winning run standing on deck for Martinsdale St. Mary's. Marianne Hart. Bunce it foul. She struck out looking and grounded out to second base. 0 for 2. And this one is foul again. 78 pitches in the game so far for more. 53 strikes, so she's been around that 67% strike rate just about all game. 0-2 pitch coming here to Marianne Hart, the right fielder. Runners at first and second. And that one high, and the runners are going to go down to second and third, which, as you said, is really dangerous yeah. because the speed, they're yeah. off and running, and anything that's a single could score both of them, yeah. depending on where it's at. Yeah, absolutely. A single will probably score both. Uh, anything to the right side of the infield now is likely going to score at least one. Wayne can trade it out for a run here. Swing and a miss. Or we'll take a strikeout. Yeah, that'll, that works. That's a big out there, climbing yeah. the ladder. As you see, Moore there taking a deep breath with the softball, trying to figure out what she wants to throw. And a swing and a miss by Emily Hughes, the center fielder. She struck out and singled. One for two today. Nine spot here. Flip over the lineup card. Mentioned for Martinsdale St. Mary's. Top of the order been very good. And another swing and a miss. Wayne could use a strikeout here. That would be the ball not in play is the best case scenario for anybody oh, yeah. in black and gray and white. Swing and a miss, struck her out. Uh, before they get one, two runs on two hits and an error. Two left on. At the end of five, complete six, nothing. Martinsdale St. Mary's, Wayne coming up to bat here in the top of the six after this from the Girl State Softball Tournament presented for the Iowa Farm Bureau. Here in Greater Des Moines, we're the unexpected sports mecca that feels like home. We are the big ballers, the little kickers, the underdogs, and the bulldogs. We've got events wacky and wild, big and small, we host them all. And that old sports cliche, nobody believes in us? Nah, when you come here, you'll believe. Because in Des Moines, only the S's are silent. Let's go! We go to the top of the sixth inning on the Girls Union Digital Network. This Class 1A semifinal winner advances to the championship matchup Friday night. Wayne has not had a base runner yet. Looking to get somebody on here. Swing and a miss. Bristol Peck is struck out and their only other at bat. Yeah, 52 pitches for German so far in this game. 39 strikes. 75% strike rate has been all over the zone. That one foul. But it's incredible. Through five complete innings, so she's averaging just over 10 pitches per inning. 
so far in this contest is German. And he's got what, one, two, three strikeouts, but yeah. he's had a lot of just balls hit at people, which is what a good pitcher does, and nothing hit real super solid. So the last two innings, she threw seven pitches and four pitches in the last two in the fourth and the fifth. This one is caught by the shortstop. Yeah, what a great play. We've seen some great defensive plays by the defenses of both of these teams, but German, they're at shortstop. A great play. Retire the seven-hole hitter for Wayne. Let's watch this one again. Look at that grab. Again, young lady flashed the leather. Yeah, that gets down. It's maybe a, probably a single. That one's high to Laney Harvey. She grounded out to the pitcher her last time up. Sure. That was after she had that really long at bat. It went nine pitches. This one fouled off. Yeah. A junior. German a junior. Campbell German also a junior. There for Martinsdale St. Mary's, shortstop and pitcher. That one bounces. But yeah, all together throughout this game, it's been incredible for her. Yeah, because that, that fifth inning, she threw one pitch, it was a pop-up. She threw one pitch, no, two pitches will pop up, one pitch a pop-up, uh, pop and then one pitch a ground out. That yeah. one. Just as we're talking about that, she throws two <laughs> right in the dirt. Yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> but, yeah, you're as you said. How efficient is that? Yeah, yeah. So, so first inning, twelve pitches. As we have a conversation, first inning, twelve pitches, nine strikes. Second inning, twelve pitches, eight strikes. Third inning was her longest inning, sixteen pitches, twelve strikes. And that was because Harvey took that, you know, nine nine uh, pitches there. Yep. Yeah. And then seven pitches in the fourth, four pitches in the fifth, and right now has seven pitches and an out in this one. Right back to her, and she throws over. Make that eight pitches and two outs. And that brings up Hallie Ingram, the DP. The sophomore struck out her last time up on three pitches. Yeah, so if she can get if she can get it out here with only one pitch thrown, she can get it out on the first pitch. That'd be three straight innings of less than ten pitches in an inning. Wow. Be a pinch hitter here for Wayne. Pinch hitters. IMT, right? Yep. An IMT insurance substitution. There's a strike. Carson Anderson, Carson she's Anderson. an eighth grader. Yep. Takes a strike. Strike two. Yeah. That's a tough spot to come in, too, against. A pitcher this hot off the bench, but you're trying to shake it up a little bit. And struck out looking to end the inning. They go down in order once again. We'll go to the bottom of the six, six nothing. Martinsdale St. Mary's coming up to bat at the Girls State Softball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. What's affordable to her might not be for him. Our means may be different, but our need for energy is the same. And keeping the price for that energy as low as possible is exactly what we strive to do. It's what we've always done. Investments made 10 years ago have kept prices nearly unchanged. Investments made today will help keep prices predictable for the future. With energy that's cleaner, reliable, and affordable for all. An energy future that's American-made. Mid-American. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Yeah. Thank you. Back here on the Girls Union Digital Network, powered by Mid American Energy. Top of the order for Martinsdale St. Mary's, leading six to nothing here against Wayne. This one, a single, hard hit single, gets through the legs of the left fielder. 
And Brindley German will go on to second on the air. Yeah, it'll be a it'll be a single for German Connor, a single, and then an error moves her to second base. You can give an air a single and an error there if you're scoring with us at home. But a runner at second base here for Martinsdale St. Mary's, and again, Martinsdale St. Mary's four runs ends it in the sixth. High pitch for ball. Otherwise, they'll have to find three outs in the top half of the seventh. Wayne trying to get out of this one, get back to the top half, and try to string something together. Ellie Baker reached on a fielder's choice and scored. And there's a strike. Flight out, struck out, 0 for 3 with the run scored. This one laid down, and she's safe. Beautiful bunt. They throw back over to third, and the runner goes to second. Yeah, that's just impossible. I mentioned that earlier when she did that. That's just impossible to try to uh, field that. That ball is perfect up the third base side. Now we're going to have a conversation between Fortune and Moore in the circle. But just, just a great play. And that brings up Campbell. German, who is singled, drove in two RBIs, tripled scored, singled and scored. Three for three with two singles and a triple. Yeah. Yeah, what a great day for the pitcher German. Pitching, hitting. There's a ball. Has a chance for two more RBIs here. Foul ball. Step out for a moment. She's just trying to regroup herself. Couple of practice swings. On the outside, ball one or two and one. Oh, watch out. Dropped it for a second, but yep. the runners are staying put. Yep. And she was asking there, she was asking you if you saw it, Moore was asking Fortune. They're going to intentionally walk her to load the bases. But Moore was asking her catcher Fortune where that pitch was, and she was a little, little confused on where that one went. As uh, Fortune said outside, yeah, intentional walk, bases loaded. Winning run at the plate here for Martinsdale St. Mary's. No outs, bases loaded. Abby Hughes takes a strike. She's uh, flying out, got an RBI single, scored a run and grounded out. One for three with a run scored and an RBI. Got two grand slams here in the tournament so far. Yep. Sixth, what, 17th and 18th all times? 16th and 17th, I 16th believe. 16th and was, 17th yeah. all times. So the 18th Grand Slam of the state tournament could be a walk off fashion. And fouls it off. Now she's ahead. Now she can do, I mentioned this earlier. Now as she's ahead in the count, she can really do what she wants as a pitcher. You're, you're in control right now as a pitcher. And, and you want to take it here as the pitcher with you. You don't want the ball in play with the bases loaded. That's high. Yeah, trying to set up outside. Two, two. Fortune was setting up outside, trying to get a chase. Didn't quite get the chase she was looking for. Swing and a miss. Struck her out. Yeah, that's a big pitch. Yeah, big pitch big there pitch. by Moore. Big out. Yeah. Got to have two more here. Brings up Sydney Bears. She singled, struck out, singled, and scored a run. Two for three with a run scored. Hits this one toward right, off the glove with a right fielder. 
One run is in. Two runs are in. They're going to hold the other runner at third. Yeah, German and Baker both score on the air. German moves up to third base. And Hughes, uh, excuse me, uh, Bears will go to second base all on the air. And now, now the winning run, run for Martinsdale St. Mary's is at second base. Hadley Pier Pearson comes up, takes a strike. She uh, struck out, doubled with an RBI, reached on a fielder's choice. One for three. This one hit to the right side, thrown out, and uh, one run is in. That scores German. Yeah, now that moves up the winning run at third base with two outs. With less than two outs, you might be able to just bunt it down the first base side here, win the game, move on to the state championship, but with two outs, you don't quite have that option. You have to hit safely. Brings up Augie Berger, flied out, grounded out, and walked 0 for 2. This one lifted to the second baseman. She makes the catch, so we will go to the top of the seven here. 9 nothing. Martinsdale St. Mary's and Wayne coming up with their, might be their last at bat at the Girls State Softball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. Hello, I'm Brent Johnson, an Iowa farmer from Calhoun County and president of the Iowa Farm Bureau. As proud title sponsor of the state softball tournament, the Iowa Farm Bureau is dedicated to creating a vibrant future for Iowa through partnerships and programs that help cultivate individuals with great character, a strong work ethic, and exceptional leadership skills. Making it to the state tournament is a great accomplishment that takes a lot of support. That's why we provide millions of dollars in awards, grants, and scholarships that recognize athletic and academic excellence. The well-being of Iowa students is also very important to Farm Bureau. That's why we provide concussion insurance coverage at no cost for all students in grades 9 through 12 who participate in a sanctioned sport. As just one of only seven states to provide this coverage, it's just another way we're striving to support Iowa's outstanding young leaders. So, from the Iowa Farm Bureau, congratulations to all the players and coaches on an outstanding season, and good luck in the tournament. And we'll go to the top of the order, Ava Whitney. For Wayne Campbell German in the circle delivers a strike. Yeah, German 63 pitches through six innings so far, 47 strikes, 74% strike rate. She's been good. I and they're going to appeal, and they say no. Did not go. Whitney struck out and flying out to short. Swing and a miss. Strike two. One, two to Whitney, the leadoff batter. And she lets the low one go. Two, two. This one rips in, and then we'll see what they score that. I think it'll go down It'll be a hit. hit. That ends the no-no. It ends the perfect game. Yeah, wow. With, with wow. in the top of the seventh. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, German still has had an incredible game. But, yeah, there's only been 14 perfect games. games. Yeah. yeah. Only been 14 perfect games ever Bunt at the state laid tournament. down. They go to, oh, drops it at first. And here comes and there's Wayne. an error. Wayne's got runners now yeah, at first and second. Yeah, that would have been second. the 15th perfect game. Yep, but yep, there's been 14. There's also been 
61 no hitters since 1974. This would have been 62. So, but it ends in the top of the seventh inning. Of course, we didn't say anything because you can't. Uh, no, because you don't want to be the person that said something. Yeah, yeah. But it's one of those things back in the dugout too. I've been I've been fortunate enough to be in dugouts where. You know, there's been long innings of, of perfect games, and you just you don't even want to go up and have conversations other than baseball, softball yeah. conversations with those people. You don't, you know, you're not going up there and talking to them about where we're going to eat afterwards or anything like that. Just letting them focus. But Wayne's trying to rally here. Yeah. It brings up Ali Joe Fortune. She's 0 for 2 with a fly out and a ground out, and that one comes high. Whitney singles. Ava Ella reaches via error. And the sole hit on the board for Wayne in the top of the seventh. This one, oh, chop foul, almost a great play yeah. by Overrender. Oh, two things there. First of all, she almost touched that in fair territory yeah, with her which, glove, <laughs> yeah. which would have been a fair ball down the line. Second of all, she almost grabbed it. So I think she did good by getting her glove down. Let that go foul there, but she came really close to touching that with her glove. Her feet were in fair territory. That would have been a fair ball. Down the right field line. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Popped up. The catcher makes the play. Bears wow. gets it. Wow. What an incredible catch by Bears. That's down. That's trouble. There yeah. might be bases loaded with nobody out. Bears with an incredible play there popping up. We talked about catcher's pop times. That's kind of how we measure the catcher. And what a great pop time and dive. Let's watch this one again as Bears just lays out for it. Look at that. Now this one popped up down the third baseline and out number two. Martinsdale St. Mary's and out away from uh, the championship matchup with the winner of our next one, North Lynn and Clarksville. Yeah, Martinsdale St. Mary's hasn't been to the championship since they won it in 2012. 13-14. 16, 18, and 21, or pardon me, 22. They have missed the title game. They were in the semifinals a year ago. Clara O'Brien steps in. She's flying out to uh, third, flying out to second. 0 for 2. Semifinals in 14, 16, and 18 as well. This one lifted high toward left. This could do it. And that's it. Game over. Martinsdale St. Mary, you're back in the title matchup. Yeah, what a game, what a catch out there, what a game. A near-perfect performance by yeah. Campbell German. One yeah. hit in the top of the seventh. She, she threw a total of 74 pitches in the game. 55 of those 74 pitches were strikes. She gave up just one hit, she struck out six, left two runners on base. Opponents hit 0 0.43 against her in this game. Campbell German, your team's off to the state championship. And those two teams watching that are going to take the diamond next are kind of already thinking, man, if we get there, we're going to have to come up with something. Yeah, they got some time to wait, though, as uh, Central Springs and Van Meter, that game is uh, all of a sudden heated up. It was 10-3 at one point. Let's go to the PA announcer. So, Friday night, Martinsdale St. Mary's will play for the big trophy once again. Zaron, a great pleasure seeing you again and doing a yeah. game with you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, it was a, and, lot of, uh, it was a lot of fun. Thanks to Justin on the controls. I've had a great week here at the tournament, and thanks to everybody for watching here. You got to see it. Awesome game tonight, an awesome pitching performance by Martinsdale, St. Mary's, and Bear, uh, or German, rather. Well, that's going to wrap it up from the Girls' State Softball Tournament presented for the Iowa Farm Bureau.